dog Dirk does a double take on the mail belt. Good boy! <laughs> and it's a race against the clock to find missing hunters in the notorious Kaimai Ranges. Best case scenario for the hunters is we get in there very quickly and locate where they left the track. The Bay of Plenty's sun is up and promising another scorcher. Delta Team Dave and Isaac are about to turn up the heat on their first job of their shift, about an hour from their Whakatane base. Uh, we just had a job come in for Kodaki. Um, they've had a guy on the warrants. The warrant for his arrest has just done a runner from the cops over there. This Delta team took out the title of 2015's National Patrol Champions, so they're a force to be reckoned with. Isaac clearly wants to get this trip over so he can get cracking and start tracking. The wanted man's list of crimes are serious. From the reports we've got, the warrant for his arrest is for um, quite a violent assault where he's hit a person with a bottle and um, knocked some teeth out and also kicked them while they're on the ground. He's quite a nasty piece of work, so it'd be good to have him off the street. Dave and Isaac need to try and contain this individual ASAP, even though it's not the ideal conditions to try and track him. The cops who are there said the report there's a lot of um, kids walking around the area. So that can contaminate a track, but um, if we get a good start, um, uh, we might be able to, uh, to find this guy. The high point of Isaac's day is about to start, and he's rearing to get going. Hop. Come. Nice. Isaac's already onto something. He follows the scent, telling Dave this is the way towards a result. Hey guys. While work is a game for Isaac, it seems that this is also the high point of the day for some local lads. Yeah, you see anyone coming up that driveway just before? We saw the OPX ray dogs. With the wanted man's scent hanging heavily in the air, Isaac leads Dave on the track of where it went. Kohu Order. Auckland South Corrections facility in Wirree is New Zealand's newest prison, with state-of-the-art technology monitoring a maximum of 960 male prisoners from high to medium security. But alongside the high tech, there's always a place for Circo drug dog team David and Ollie. Come. Every car is combed for contraband. Got your handbag in there? No. OK, come, see. Ollie, see. When David directs Ollie to check out this car, he shows some definite interest. When given an opportunity from the other side, he sits. So Ollie's doing a good little indication for us in the car. He's, he's sat and it's strictly below his nose. The object of Ollie's indication is taken away by David's colleagues. Oh boy. Now it's time for the reward. <laughs> the female driver joins another visitor who's also been found with contraband. That's where it was found? Yep, inside my bag. Are you here for a visit? No. Just picking up corn. Not only does the young man have a bong, he has the gear to smoke inside it. So that's being confiscated, OK? Yep. David now deals with the female driver. Is it your car, is it, Miss? Yes. OK, so you won't be visiting today? Yes, I heard of, that, sir. Yeah, because of the... Um, because of the oh. because of that being found in you get anything else in the vehicle that you shouldn't have? No, All those point bags? Synthetics, it's synthetics. Legal yeah. synthetics. Okay, so However, on... However, that's probably on... illegal. And yes, exclude me, and I'll be on my way. Maybe they weren't travelling together, but these two are certainly headed in the same direction. So you, you're both going to be excluded? Who oh, both? Oh, yeah, yeah, I know, I, know oh, I, know, I know different cars, but... The news seems to have gone down well with the woman. As David fills out her exclusion form, she bids a fond farewell to her trusty bong by sniffing it like Ollie. Oh, sorry. Yeah, just, yeah. As a result of the 24-hour exclusion, the directors inside will look at that and they may issue a, um, a visitor of prohibition order, both being excluded and being asked to leave. Knowing she won't be back on prison property for a while, the woman makes a noisy exit. The people travelling in the woman's car received a 24-hour exclusion. The female driver was banned from visiting Kohu order for six months. Sorry about that, guys. The young man on site to collect forms was not a registered visitor. He and his travelling companions received a 24-hour exclusion. The drugs and smoking implements were destroyed. One. Ollie the dog, who put them all out of business, did a great job. Every day is busy at the International Mail Centre and today is no different. Large volumes of mail are passing over the belt to be checked. 
Customs dog team Dan and Dirk start working the conveyors. So we're working on belt one now, which is the smaller articles. We've got a bit of China, Britain, Germany and Netherlands coming through. So those are some really good countries that we get quite a bit through. So we'll just get Dirk over and see what we can find. Good boy, Dirk, fine. Dirk's instinctive curiosity makes him check each and every item for anything interesting. Oh, good boy, Dirk. Sit. Good dog. Show me. So Dirk's just indicated to a parcel. That's from Netherlands. It seems Dirk's on a roll now. Further along the belt, he finds another package that smells like a target. Show me. Good boy! <laughs> Dirk gets stood down for a break while Dan takes the two suspicious items over to the X-ray machine to see what he's found. So they've just gone through. We have got two here. Just from the inconsistencies, you can see the, the crystals in it. So I'm pretty sure he's got a big one there. And the, the second, I can see two wee bags of powder as well. So Dirk's done a brilliant job. We'll go in, we'll, we'll see what we've got and test them. Let's hope he's got a good one. Back in the Bay of Plenty, Delta Dog Team Dave and Isaac are in Oportiki hunting down a dangerous offender. Police intel suggests he could be hiding near his home address. Yeah, anyone else here with you? Uh, no, mate. Just you? Yeah. Okay. Dave relays this back to comms. Come on, yeah, we've got a, a track out the side of the house, the address, and, and towards um, Church Street. There's a group of kids sitting opposite uh, the address where they said no one came out the driveway there. Isaac's sure the man his handler wants to find is somewhere around here, and he starts to ring fence the house. With this in mind, Dave has a chat to the occupant. Hi. Oh, yeah. Around the back, other police staff spot the wanted man hiding out in the toilet. Isaac quickly moves to block any escape route. The target is arrested and removed from the property. At the station, he was charged with intent to injure, and after appearing in court, he was sentenced to two years and four months imprisonment. So, yeah, good result. But with a shift only just underway, this team can expect more dramas after dark. After midnight, Delta Team Dave and Isaac find themselves back in Fakatane after a successful afternoon's work. They've now been called to contain some wrongdoers. These guys have been known to run away from the police, so uh, we're going to turn up there with the dog and either deter them from running or stop them if they do. Dave and Isaac soon spot the offender's car. The driver has run his vehicle up a driveway and fled. Come here, mate, I'll let the dog out. 35 kilos doesn't seem like much, but Isaac's bursting with raw German shepherd power. With tracking skills on full alert, he pulls Dave along. When they get to the abandoned car, they find somebody has strangely chosen to stay seated. Where's your mate? The passenger chooses to remain silent. The passenger's still with the vehicle. If they like, I can come and talk to them. The driver must be found quickly, so Dave gets Isaac into the harness, updating comms as he goes. Yeah, the vehicle, if you go down Anzac, it's the first on the left, you'll see my vehicle there. Passenger's still sitting in the passenger seat. Dave makes a request for other police to set up a cordon and block the runaway driver's escape route. Other vehicle, carry on with uh, cordons up on valley. The scent tracks through a number of properties, suggesting to Dave the offender is trying to confuse Isaac while looking for a hideout. But the Delta team is having none of it. They've done this gig hundreds of times and know every trick in the book. Sick. Dave and Isaac continue tracking and clearing some properties. This offender is proving to have serious stamina. Next, the track leads to where the runaway driver finally thought he could lay low. But Isaac proves a point that while you can run, you cannot hide. Good boy, good boy. Back at the International Mail Centre, Customs drug dog Dirk has made two indications on two parcels in as many minutes. Show me. Good boy! <laughs> Both items are from high-risk areas, so Dan will need to open each one to find the source of Dirk's interest. No, the truth. Package number one confirms Dirk's indication. We've got some brown crystal substance. We don't know what it is yet. At this stage, I suspect it's MDMA, but we'll, um, we'll get the first defender to test it for us and tell us for sure. The first defender is one of Customs' most reliable tools, and its high-tech database can identify thousands of substances. 
So um, the first offender's confirmed it for me. Um, so this is chloro. So Dirk's found is the active ingredient. So this is a brilliant, brilliant um, find for him. Package number two follows the same intense scrutiny. So we've got two bags that are very similar to the, to the first one we found, just a bit smaller crystals. The results are another notch on Dirk's collar. So the scans come back for, for uh, again. So that is again, that's the, the active ingredient in the So Dirk's done another good job. There's something he is trained to find. It just shows that no matter what you do, we're still gonna find it, no matter what. This MDMA would have been worth up to five and a half thousand dollars. But for now, it's sent to customs investigations before being destroyed. Yeah. Dirk's had a cracker of a morning, and after getting his reward, he can't wait to get back to work. Good boy, mate, good boy. It's just after 4 p.m. in the Kaimai Ranges, and a couple of hunters have made contact with the police that they are lost. Land Search and Rescue, or Landsar team Graham and Gemma, have been called to assist with locating the two hunters and getting them safely out of the bush. OK, so these guys, hunters? Matamata Mata police officer Ross knows the area well and talks the search team through where he thinks these hunters might be. Uh, once they've hit the ridge up there, they've gone south. They've just followed the ridge down. They said they went down about 45 minutes, then they've turned around, come back, and haven't found the track. One of the hunters had climbed a tree and used the last of his cell phone battery to relay this information. No medical issues, there's two of them there. He reckons he's by a creek that it possibly runs, he believes runs west. While all this sounds straightforward, once the search team are in the thick bush and with fading light, it's going to be a major challenge. Ideally, we'd like to get to them before it gets dark and um, before the rain starts coming. As you can see, it's pretty cloudy and, and grey and it can be pretty miserable in the Kaimai's when it... This farmer shares his boundary with the forest, so he takes the search team to the best insertion point. In the back of the van, German Shepherd Gemma waits patiently to exercise her skills. She's been operational for four and a half years. Before they start, a check is done for footprints. See anything, Matt? Joining the search is a Landsar visual tracker, teammate Matt. You reckon that's the, that's the males there? Yep, roger. I'm trying to identify the print now is that uh, once we get into areas where there's possible contamination from other walkers, if it becomes very contaminated, we might be able to use visual tracking to actually follow the target sign um, if the dog comes off the track for whatever reason. So that's the benefit of spending some time at the start to try and confirm the sign. With the weather closing in and the light dropping, everyone's yeah, hoping okay. these hunters have bush survival skills. Away we go. The guy who ran from Dave and Isaac says it's all a simple misunderstanding. I just woke up, woke up, and, started woke up and started running. And things get complicated in the Kaimai Ranges for Gemma, Graham and Matt. Nah, it's not, not strong, eh? We're thinking we may have overshot or missed where they've gone off, off the track. In Whakatane, Delta Team Dave and Isaac have been tracking some known wrongdoers to a dense and tangled bushy area. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come out. Come out, boss. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Go down to the road. Fearful of what Isaac might do if he doesn't comply, the man emerges from the bushes and makes his way down the bank, only to be followed by his partner in crime. It's double trouble, and now the big question looming is which one was driving. Why did you run off? Were you driving? I mean, yeah. Mm. <laughs> you don't know? Mm. Oh. Mm. I just woke up. Woke up and, woke up and started running. Wow. Whose is this gear here? Mine. That's yours? No, no. Not yours. Yours, not yours. While they can't get their story straight, the patrol car takes Mr. Greenshirt back to the station, while his mate waits with Isaac for car number two. Sweet, what's your name, man? Name. Hey? Name. No name. You better come up with one pretty quick. Everyone's got a name. Oh, well, you're running the show then? Let's go. Back at the station, the green-shirted man admitted driving the car. He was charged with excess breath alcohol, received 80 hours community work, and was disqualified from driving for six months. Neither of the passengers were charged. Another victory for Isaac, who's earned his title of top dog. It's, uh, it's always great to, to have a good catch with the dog, and all your training comes together like that and working as a team and, and getting a great result like that. 
back in the Kaimai Ranges. The weather conditions are rapidly deteriorating, so the race is on to locate the lost hunters. Best case scenario for the hunters is we get in there very quickly and, and locate where they left the track. And away we go. There you go. Gemma leads the way with her handler, Graham, and fellow search and rescue volunteer, Matt, following. There you go, Gem. Let's go. So at the moment, I've just got Gemma working off leash. She'll indicate if she locates a track going off. Our high probability area is on top of that ridge. Now conditions are really closing in, and with more rain soaking through the canopy, Gem is really up against it. The search team keeps in constant touch with comms, confirming they've reached the ridge. He basically said uh, the moment he got up on top, that's when he went south. Based on the information that we've got, I would have thought they would have peeled off already, but if we haven't got any sign, we'll, we'll carry on until we can locate something. As Gemma has a quick drink stop, Matt places a marker to indicate the area covered, and then the team are off again. Footprints become evident. Right there, look. She's standing on it. Yeah, it's a good one. Another good one girl, there. good girl. That's the most sign I've seen. With Matt locating a visual sign just off the trail, there's hope that Gemma can sniff out a much-needed scent. Nah, it's not, not strong, eh? So we're thinking we may have overshot and missed where they've gone off, off the track. Our next best option is to start patrolling back down the route we came, again, taking it really cautiously and slowly to try and locate the point that they left the main walking track is and see how we go. But three hours into the mission and now working in complete darkness, the chances of a successful outcome are reducing by the minute. It's one of those things where you have to make haste slowly because if we go fast, we will miss where they've come off the track. Further north at Kohu Order, ASCF Circo team David and Ollie are checking afternoon prison visitors. Take your food and handbags out, thanks. Food and handbags. Ollie begins the standard sniff through the car for narcotics, but instead of drugs, he locates a fellow canine. <laughs> There's a tiny dog snoozing. You got a dog in your car? It's my dog. Yeah, you're not allowed to bring a dog on property. Look, come over here. There's a great big sign over there. It's there for a reason. That's the place where people just go straight past. As a safety measure, no dogs are permitted on New Zealand prison sites. In the uh, future, do you want you to visit or not? You give us a warning, but you can't cancel no, I don't, You don't tell me what to do. I'm telling you what you do need to do. Pass. Hopefully this Malvi visitor's bark is worse than her bite. Just come and give us your ID, thanks. Yeah. But no ID means no entry anyway, so she would still be in the doghouse whether she'd brought her pet along or not. It's a 24-hour exclusion. If um, that doesn't happen, then it goes into a visitor prohibition order, OK? Both women, their kids and their dog take themselves walkies off prison property, with a bit more barking thrown in for good measure. Every time I'm coming, you're not good for my family. Good day for Ollie. It's a bit hot, but we did a good job. Happy. Couple of good results. Another good afternoon in Auckland South. It's been over six hours since Lansar team Graham, Gemma and Matt started their search for two missing hunters in the Kaimai Ranges, and their search has now finally taken a good turn. Oh, yeah, it's pretty good here, man. Good here. It's the best lead yet, and it's confirmed by comms. Yeah, copy, that's where he said he went, and then he's obviously wandered inland from there. So we've got a strong track, so as you can see, she's moving along pretty quickly. It's always a good sign when you see your dog push through barriers like that. The scent might be intact, but in wet bush, voices can't carry. So Matt brings out the search and rescue whistle. Wait, girl. Wait. Boop. Carry on. Out in the, it's out in the open here, so the scent may have been smashed. What appeared to be so positive is going nowhere. We'll come up. Graham and Matt consult their map in one last effort to figure well, out where the couple could be. Uh, we're pretty sure they're stuck in around this high point in 575. With the search now up to seven hours, the very determined Gemma follows the remains of the hunter's scent. She's onto it here, eh? Good news. They get a distant response. Hello? Yeah, yep. that's something, huh? Yeah. What's it? Sweet. High five. <laughs> Where you go, Jim? Do you see our torches, guys? 
Gemma makes a beeline for the sound of voices with Graham and Matt in hot pursuit. I think yeah, I've got visual. I think that's Matt, Gemma. Hello. How are you doing? You guys all right? Yeah. I'm Graham. Hello. How are you? Hello, I'm Matt. Hey, Matt. Hello. How are you going? Hi. That's, Hello. So sorry about that's that. That's all right. That's Gemma. Hello, Gemma. Good dog. We're from um, Hamilton Search and Rescue. Good dog. Thank you. The hunters are cold, wet and a bit scared, but relieved they've been found. Their successful rescue is all down to Gemma. You're a good dog, eh? All the way in the bush in the dark, one of us. Good girl. Hey, that's a good girl. Good. After nine hours, a perfect outcome for all <laughs> thanks to Gemma. And now they can make their way safely out of the bush.